Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald taking you through today's tutorial and this video we are going to look at solutions to the INEP paper of the year 2019 for subsidiary math and we are going to concentrate mainly on questions 5 to 8. So these are the questions we are going to concentrate on in this tutorial. I think in the previous video I left the I left you with these questions and now we are going to go through them so that you can mark yourself and check your progress. So we shall start with question 5. Question 5 says that evaluate the integral of x power 4 minus 1 everything divided by x squared from 1 to 2 with respect to x and the 5 marks so we are going to go through the solution step by step so that we see where the 5 marks come from now first of all is to split the numerator when you split the numerator it means this divided by each term in the numerator is divided by the term in the denominator so x power 4 divided by x squared will come up with this then minus which is this 1 minus 1 divided by x squared to come up with this Next, we apply the rules of indices. So when you divide this, divide by this, it is same base. So you apply the powers. So 4 minus 2 gives you a power of 2, which is this. For this part, we apply the rules for negative indices, whereby if you want to make the denominator to become a numerator, it means the sign on the power changes. So here it was x power 2 in the denominator. When it becomes the numerator, it becomes x to power negative 2. Now that means that integral of this the same as the integral of this which is this line. Now next is to apply the rule for integration which say that increase the power by 1 divided by the, by the new power. So here the power is 2 so increase by 1 to get 2 plus 1 divided by the new power which is 2 plus 1. For this part the power is negative 2 so increase by 1 to get negative 2 plus 1 then divide by the new power which is negative 2 plus 1. So when I simplify this, I come up with this. Now from, from here, I realize that x power negative 1 is equal to 1 over 2. So next we shall now substitute the, for the limits. For example, what we shall do, we shall first put this upper limit where there is x to come up with this bracket. Then next we put this lower limit where there is x to come up with this bracket. And now that when you simplify this bracket, you are going to come up with 19 over 6. And when we simplify this bracket, we're going to come up with 5 over 3. So now 19 over 6 minus 5 over 3 will give you 3 over 2. And this is the value of the required integral which was given. Now let's see how the marking can be done. First is to split the numerator. You get that method mark. Next is to integrate. Now when I integrate the first term, I'll come up when I integrate this term I'm going to come up with this so this one that is where the m1 comes from and the next m1 is for integrating this second part so when I integrate this I'm going to come up with this that, so that is where the m1 comes from so far we have got three question three marks we are remaining with two now the next mark is for substituting the limit so this m1 is for these two parts so the whole of those two parts you will get this m1 and this a1 is for the answer so that's how the five marks can come about so you can mark yourself and make corrections where they went wrong now we shall go to question six question six says the ages of eight students in a class are 12 13 14 15 20 sorry 12 17 18 16 find the part a mean age and that is two marks then variance and that is three marks so we are going to go through the solution step by step so that you can see how those five marks can be got without leaving any the first thing to do is to generate a table with values of x now the x values are all these data values given but because they want variance we are also going to generate values of x squared. So how is the, are these values of x squared got? Come to this. When you say 12 squared, you'll come up with 144. So you put it there. 13 squared is 169. Put it there. 14 squared is 196. 15 squared is 225. 12 squared is 144. 17 squared is 289. 13 squared is 169. And 16 squared is 
two five six so that is the first step to get the generate the squares and of the data values now the next step is to get the sum so when i add all these values i'm going to come up with one one two so that is the summation of x then when i add up also all these values i'm going to come up with one five nine two so that is the summation of x squared so now that i've finished the table i can go ahead to get my solution now part a they wanted the mean mean is given by summation of x over n now this summation of x is this sum which is 112 and the n is the number of items so we're going to count one two so this is one two three four five six seven and eight so there are eight terms so that's why you put here eight now one one two divided by eight you come up with 14 and that will be your answer now we shall go to part b variance now variance is given by the formula summation of x squared over n minus the mean squared so we know that summation of x squared is this part which is 1592 so come and put there 1592 divided by 8 which is an n which is 8 so put here 8 minus mean squared our mean was 14 so come and put here 14 squared now the next is to use a calculator and when you use a calculator you're going to come up with three as your variance so that is what basically what they wanted in this question let's see how marking can be done so this first mark is for you to get this sum of b of x squared so for you to generate these values and find the sum that is one mark that is b1 then the m1 for you to substitute this the values in the formula for mean and this a1 is for you to simplify to get the answer which is required now this one is also for you to substitute the values in the expression for variance and this a1 is for the final answer now we shall go to question 7 question 7 says solve the equation cos theta equal to sine to theta for values of theta from 0 degrees to 360 degrees and they give it 5 marks so we are going to also going to go through this solution and step by step so that we don't miss any mark so this is what the equation which is given first of all you have to remember the expression for double angle that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta so where there is sine 2 theta you put there 2 sine theta cos theta next is to take everything this side now there's a mistake students make one student mistake student make is there is when they see cos theta here and also cos theta here what they do they are going to say this cancels and this cancels you remain with one equal to sine 2x now that step is very very wrong and when we see it we shall just you are going to miss some angles so don't make that mistake what you do take everything on one side so that you can factorize when i factorize that i'm going to put cos theta outside and in bracket i remain with one minus sine theta being equal to zero what does that mean it means that either cos theta is equal to zero or one minus sine theta is equal to zero so when you say that when cos theta is equal to zero we shall it will remain the same but when this is equal to zero it means that sine theta is equal to 0 0.5 i think we realize that if we had cancelled this cos theta you would not be having this part so that is why it is not okay for you to cancel at this point what you do just bring everything on one side as we have done in this step always remember that so now that we are on this step now that we have got this we are going to use inverse trig so when cos theta is equal to zero we're going to say theta will be our cos zero to give you these two values and when sine theta is equal to 0 0.5 it means that theta is equal to arc sine 0 0.5 to give you those two values now next is to rearrange to list all the angles but in the given range remember our values of theta range from 0 to 360 so you list them from ranging from 0 to 360 so that is basically what they wanted and let, now let us see how the marks were awarded so first of all is for you to remember the identity of double angle you get a mark 
the next is to factorize because like i said most students what they do they cancel at this step so when you cancel this step it means you have only got one mark out of the five marks because the rest will not be okay so remember to factorize then the next mark is for you to use inverse trick so this m1 is for this part and this other m1 is for this part so inverse trig of this is this and inverse trig of this is this now the a1 is to list all the values in the given range so always remember to list all the values but they must be lying in the given range so now we shall go to question 8 question 8 says a particle of mass 5 kilograms rests in limiting equilibrium on a rough plane inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate part A the normal reaction and part B coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane. So note that the particle is of mass 5 kilograms and the inclined plane is inclined at an angle 20 degrees and that it is rough. So the first step is to draw the diagram. This is an inclined plane, inclined at an angle 20 degrees. This is the mass was 5 kilograms, so the weight will be 5g newtons acting vertically downwards. Now these are the co these two 5g sine 20 and 5g cos 20 are the components of this weight, and this will be the normal reaction. While this will be the force due to friction. Remember they say the plane is rough. Now how do you know that the friction is going upwards or downwards? First of all you also say if this body is to slide, will it go upwards or downwards? This body if it is to slide, it would go downwards. Therefore the friction will oppose motion by going upwards. So part A they wanted you to get the normal reaction. So you come here and say Normal reaction is good by resolving perpendicular to the plane. Therefore, R will be equal to 5G cos 20. But you know that G is 9.8. Therefore, when you substitute and simplify, your normal reaction will be 46.0449 newtons. These are four decimal places. Now, shall go to part B. Part B says, so part B, they want you to get the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane. Now, if the particle is in limiting equilibrium and there is no external force acting, it means that this angle is equal to the angle of friction. Maybe let's first derive that. So that means when we resolve part of the plane, we shall say that F which is friction is equal to 5G sine 20. So this F will be equal to 5G sine 20. But we know that R, F is equal to mu R, where R is 5G cos 20. So when you substitute, I'll come up with this and 5G can cancel to remain with sine 20 being equal to mu cos 20. Now when, make, when I make mu the subject, I realize that mu is equal to sine 20 over cos 20 giving you that. But we know that sine 20 over cos 20 is equal to tan 20. Therefore mu is equal to tan 20 degrees. So always remember that, that when you have the angle of friction, then the coefficient of friction will be given by tan that angle. So in our case, this angle of friction is 20. Therefore, the coefficient of friction will be tan 20 degrees, which is equal to 0 0.3640. So basically, that's what we wanted. They wanted, and now we're, let's try, let's put there the mark allocation. So the first mark will be on a correct force diagram. But for the force diagram, you should remember that forces are drawn using a ruler when most students want to use freehand and when you use freehand that makes everything wrong so that is the first mark the second mark will be on resolving perpendicular to the plane and the third mark will be on using a calculator to get the normal reaction now here the fourth will be remembering that coefficient of friction is equal to turn the angle of friction and the lastly getting the value of the coefficient of friction which was required
so now i'll leave you with some two questions which are for section b we have been dealing with section a questions where each question co carries five marks now these questions carry 15 marks each so i'll leave you with two questions each with 15 marks So that will be that's the assignment and the solutions will be available in my next video otherwise thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel and also share the link with other students that who are also doing sub math so that we, we all excel as a team